An alternate way to look at fluid statics is to say, well, we have no motion and just some, apply some common sense. If I've got a big chunk of fluid here that has some mass and it's subject to gravity in the downward direction and its height is delta H, the difference in height between the top face and the bottom face, then the gravitational force pulling it down will have to be balanced by the pressure force on the bottom being bigger than the pressure force on the top. So P bottom times A bottom minus P top times A top must be equal to Mg. Or the difference in pressures minus Mg must be equal to zero. Now if this is a nice square box like I've drawn it, then the area on the bottom and the area on the top are both the same and they're just equal to A. And the mass, well that'll be the density times the volume and that'll be A, the cross-sectional area of the bottom or the top, times delta H. So P bottom minus P top must be equal to rho G delta H. Or once again, delta P equal to rho G delta H pressure increases as you go down in elevation. Now density is going to turn out to be really important in these situations. Density of water is about a thousand kilograms per cubic meter, while the density of air is only about one kilogram per cubic meter. So there's about an 800 time difference. So there'll be 800 times more increase in pressure if you go down a meter in water then there will be increase in pressure if you go down a meter in air. The result is delta P is usually quite large in liquids due to elevation. However, the pressure difference in gases is often negligible compared to the pressure difference in the liquids unless you're looking at very large changes in elevation. Very little pressure difference between the bottom of a building and the top of a, of a building quite a bit of pressure difference between the bottom of a mountain and the top of a mountain, unless it's either a very short mountain or a very tall building.